Today's topic, Wendell Carter Jr. Please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit the bell for notifications so you can be gang up in this thing. Today we're going over Wendell Carter Jr. Now I think Wendell Carter Jr. is probably one of the most underrated big men. And in fact, I'm, after doing a deep scouting of him, I would call him right now, and this is going to be kind of controversial, I would think he's, I think he's going to be the best big man to come out of this draft. I think he's going to be better than DeAndre Aiden. I think he's going to end up better than Marvin Bagley. I think he's going to be end up better than Mo Bamba. And I think he's going to end up better than Jaron Jackson Jr. I think the one thing me as a, you know, just observing and watching and looking at everybody in this draft, the thing that I like about Wendell Carter is he plays, moves, and reacts like a hooper, like a basketball player. He's not just an athlete that happens to play basketball. He's not somebody who picked up basketball late and has learned, you know, kind of the fundamentals. And, and if you've li listened to my other videos, uh, especially on Aiden, uh, Bagley, and uh, Jaron Jackson, you you would uh, get how I talked about how they move on the court, how uh, like Aiden is kind of robotic, and Marvin Bagley is kind of gangly, and Jaron Jackson is kind of awkward on the court. All of them, none of them move like a natural hooper, if you ask me. But when you watch Wendell Carter Jr., you see somebody who can really, really hoop. Um, very high skill, very high skilled guy. Um, he has drop steps. He has the baby left hook, baby right hook. He has the pull up jumper. Um, he has the beginnings of a dribble drive game that's going. Um, if you watched him at Duke, you didn't see uh, all that Wendell Carter has to offer. He kind of put his game in the icebox a lot for the sake of team. And if you go back and watch some of his high school videos, look up some of his high school clippings and things like that, you will notice that Wendell Carter in high school was a scorer, much like uh, Marvin Bagley. But now, I would probably say at this stage, Marvin Bagley is a, probably a more aggressive scorer. Uh, and more useful as a scorer, but I would say that Wendell Carter has a lot more tools in his toolbox right now in comparison to Marvin Bagley. Um, he, he just can do a lot. Um, if you watch him, he, he's got a better handle than Marvin Bagley. I said his jump shot, it, it looks a lot better. Uh, he's not nearly the athlete that Marvin Bagley is, uh, especially from a you know, run jump uh, perspective, but he is 6'10", 251 pounds, seven foot four inch uh, wingspan, seven foot four and a half inch wingspan, nine foot one standing reach, legit NBA center size. Um, and if you go back into his draft express profile, you'll notice that all these measurements are improved from just a little over a year ago at the Nike Hoop Summit. I think he had a nine foot standing reach, seven three wingspan, and he was 257 pounds. So he's 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 tightening that body up. Um, he is getting ready to go to war, and and the reason why I like him, and and it's the reason why I kind of like Aiden a, a lot also is people are really getting into the pace and space thing. So you you really need a high skilled big man, a, a real high skilled big man at that five position. Now. One thing Wendell Carter is, he's like I said, he's not the athlete that uh, Aiden or Bagley is. Uh, his feet, he doesn't have the footwork of uh, Jaron Jackson Jr., but he moves pretty well for a big uh, center. And the one thing he's got on those other guys is he's physical as hell. He is 251 pounds rock solid. He is ready to bang in the NBA from day one. He is going to punish little guys who switch on to him on the inside. He is going to be able to take bigs to the outside and put that three-pointer in their mug. His three-point shot is very, very refined. His form is wonderful. He doesn't have any kind of quirks to give up. Like, you know, like when you watch Jaron Jackson shoot his shot, even though, and I, I, I'm going to tell you, people have a lot of faith in Jaron Jackson's shot because 
He's been hitting at 40% uh, since high school. Uh, Wendell Carter Jr.'s range has just just started to increase, but he shot over 40% in college, just like Jaron Jackson. Um, so his, his range is, is getting increased. But unlike the other guys, his dribble drive game has – he's got the framework to already to take people off the dribble. And I'm not talking about just attacking closeouts, um, you know, uh, when people run out at him when he's at the three-point line. I'm talking about being able to actually take bigs off the dribble and pull up on them. It's, it, it's got some real promise in there, and I think it's, it's, it's going to come along um, in the next couple of years, and that's going to really change his game, and he's going to become a dynamic scorer. I predicted, I predicted he's going to be um, a 20 or 12 kind of guy in the NBA. He's going to be a starting center. He's going to be able to do some rim protection uh, just with his size, and he has enough athleticism to protect the rim. Um, also, um, like I said, he, he's going to have – he's going to be able to set those – he's already a good screen setter, which is real important, and his screens are going to be physical. Uh, he's going to punish smalls uh, that run into him. He's going to punish smalls on the inside that switch onto him, like I said earlier. And he's going to, and bigs are going to have to come out and respect him. It might not be all the way out to the NBA three-point range initially, but it's going to be. Uh, he's, if you watch Marcus All play and how Marcus All played before uh, Fizdale got there with those long twos. He's going to at least have that in his game. And his form is so good right now already that um, there's no question that he's going to be able to extend that out to three-point line, maybe as soon as that's a, his rookie season, but definitely between <laughs> before his uh, rookie deal is up. He's going to be taking those three-pointers. And um, But like I said, he has a refined back-to-the-basket post game. He's able to handle the ball on the interior. Uh, he rebounds at a great rate for a big. Uh, even for a five. So you're going to be able to play him in that five five out offense where he's the only big on the court. And he's going to be able to also, if you got some guys that can really get to the hoop, he's going to be able to take his his matchup to the outside, to the three-point line. Or you can run the pick and roll, pick and pop. A lot of things you're going to be able to do with Wendell Carter. And, I mean, he does have enough athleticism to get by and I think his athleticism is going to shine a little bit better because he's already probably lost about 10 pounds since he or what he because I know he was at least 260 at Duke uh, and he's already down to 251 so it t- just tells you that he's been in the gym working and grinding smart player uh, was thinking about going to Harvard parents wanted him to go to Harvard uh, out of high school and I think he made the best basketball decision to go to the Harvard of Hoops in, in Duke University and get that exposure that he needs to get to the NBA. And I think if you, if you know, he probably would have made a dis- different decision on uh, college if Marvin Bagley was already in the bag for Duke. Marvin Bagley came later, you know, after he reclassified, because I envisioned that he planned on being the number one inside scoring option for Duke, putting up, you know, Marvin Bagley numbers while at Duke. Um, and if you go on YouTube, you just put Wendell Carter and DeAndre Aiden in there and you'll see the video where he pretty much <laughs> went to work on DeAndre Aiden um, in high school. So I think it was AAU ball though. Uh, so me saying that he's going to end up being the best big out of this draft to me is not a stretch. If you watch him play, like I said, if you watch him move on the court, you watch his work ethic, his intelligence, uh, his hustle, he has a lot of positive going for him over the other guys. I mean, DeAndre Aiden, he has the, and I'm not going to say it's his motor, but he has the this in and out where he takes, you know, sometimes he's not all the way engaged in the game. Um, Marvin Bagley doesn't have a right hand. And, you know, that, that really worries me as somebody who's supposed to be a primary scorer if, they, if people could just play your uh, left hand all the time because in the NBA, they're going to scout the hell out of you. And then you got Jaron Jackson who really doesn't have much of an offensive game. And I think now, I, I think Jaron Jackson, just like um, uh, Wendell Carden, has the 
build budding of an offensive game. Wendell Carter is a lot more refined right now. He has the he's I mean his standard reach is just uh an inch lower than Jaron Jackson. He's not too, he's about the same level of athlete, maybe even a little bit better athlete as Jaron Jackson Jr. Doesn't have the footwork as Jaron Jackson Jr., especially defensively, but I think he's going to have the intelligence to really be able to put some things together uh, defensively. He's not going to be a, a negative defense defender, and he's a much better rebounder than Jaron Jackson Jr. So when you start putting all these, putting the picture together of what DeAndre Aiden's pluses and minus are, what Marvin Bagley's pluses, pluses and minus are, and what Jaron Jackson's pluses and minus are, and what uh, Muhammad Bamba's pluses and minus are, and then you put Wendell Carter you will notice that he has very, very few, or very, very few negatives, especially negatives that will hurt him in the modern NBA. Uh, the only thing that he might not be as switchable as Jaron Jackson uh, and Marvin Bagley as far as athleticism go, and even DeAndre Aiden, because DeAndre Aiden has good feet and good footwork. I think he gets a bad rap on his defense. Um, I think he just needs reps and uh, instruction. But... Um, He's, he's, he's got good physical tools. Um, I mean, nowhere near the physical tools of DeAndre Aiden, who is just like a, a, has an elite physical profile. Um, you know, 7'1", 7'5", wingspan, and 9'3", standing reach. So he's, he's not quite there, but, you know, DeAndre Aiden is a freak physically. So he's not there, but... His skill level is up there, um, way above everybody, every other big in his draft. Um, his shot is more refined and looks like it's more transferable to the NBA. Um, it's just that Wendell Carter has a lot going for him, and I've been telling people on the Memphis board, people know that I'm a big Trey Young guy, um, but I've been saying for like ever since the lottery that Wendell Carter is Junior is probably the guy that I would select if I was the Memphis GM at number four. Uh, if I thought I could trade down and get him and pick up another asset, I would do that. Uh, but I would target Wendell Carter Jr. I would let him play with Marcus All for a year or two, get his feet wet at power forward and uh, back up five, um, and just let him be the future five and play a little grit and grind basketball for the next two years, you know, with. Mike, uh, Mark, Wendell Carter, and uh, you know probably bring somebody in who can play defense off the wing, a score off the wing. Uh, hopefully, Dylan Brooks is a, is a decent score on the wing. But I think that thing of having guys who are physical, tough, with a high basketball IQ, you cannot buy that. He's he gets compared to Al Horford, and I see the c comparison, but I don't. He, he still he moves a little bit better than Al Horford did as when he was in college. His, when you watch him, he just looks like a basketball player compared to all these other guys who look kind of stiff. Um, but yeah, that's where I am with this, and I will tell you like this is why I endorse. I'm going on record uh, May 22nd, 2018, almost a full month before the draft, I think. Um, yeah, exactly. One month before the draft. Um, Wendell Carter Jr., hopefully, to Memphis. Uh, I don't care if it's at number four. Because, like I said, if I think he's the going to end up the best big in this draft, taking him at number four would not bother me. The only, only caveat I would offer to people uh, as far as Wendell Carter Jr. Uh, taking him is if you have complete faith that Michael Porter Jr. is going to check out physically and I really wouldn't want to play that game I think Wendell Carter Jr. is close enough to the level of prospect as a healthy Michael Porter Jr. where you don't have to risk the injury problems and with Memphis, the Memphis Grizzlies um, history of injuries and um, managing injuries especially on young players and young draftees I would stay away from Michael Porter Jr. even though he would be probably the number one guy if healthy for Memphis right now. But but closely behind, I would have Wendell Carter Jr. And the only reason I say this over Trey Young is because I don't want to deal 
with uh, the people abusing Trey Young in the playoffs, which I've been seeing that they're going to find him, and he is just too small. When people have, if any team comes up against him with two physical um, guards, he's going to be really, really, he's going to really hamstring your defense. But this video has gone long enough. Wendell Carter, the number one big man in the 2018 draft. You heard it here first on Hustle Hoops. Um, so don't forget, like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit that bell for notifications, and get in part of the Hustle Hoop gang. Peace.